wonderful. Okay, so I just want to do a quick introduction of uh, who we are. And so my name is Caitlin, and I'm with Lauren Coos, and we are both um, academic resource coordinators in our dorm. And so that means that we work for our college and that we provide uh, academic like tips to students in our dorm. And so we created that Instagram account so that we would be able to connect with more residents. And her and I, we are both dietetic students. So we study food and nutrition and we love vegetables. And so that's a big reason why we wanted to talk to you today because we found you on Twitter and we wanted to ask you a few questions. And so our first question is, how did you initially get inspired to grow vegetables? Um, I think I, I got to blame my father for that because when I was very young, sort of five years old, I would help my father. And I can remember vividly that he gave me a small piece of land about the size of a, a dinner table and some seeds and said, there you are, son, you just copy what, what I've just done. And that was the beginning, you know, and every day before school or after school, I would uh, go down and tend to my little postage stamp garden. That's great. That's wonderful. And uh, Lauren and I, we're going to be going back and forth for who asked the questions. And so Lauren will be asking the next question. So I'm going to mute my microphone. Yeah, okay, hope you can hear me okay. Um, oh, it sounds like I'm, there we go. Um, so how would you describe yourself? Um, I'm a big man, mild, but fiercely competitive. Oh. Your, your end is not correct. Yeah, okay, that's all right. So we'll just try to, I can try um, to ask the questions and hopefully it'll, it'll stay better. Yeah. Um, so what has been your favorite part about joining social media, such as Twitter and Instagram? Basically, seeing and talking to people. It, it's nice and I don't do negatives. I'm positive in all walks of life. And I think from nowhere, my, my social media started with just me and one or two friends discussing, discussing gardening topics and a couple photographs a week and it gradually grew. And then last May of 2020, I posted a before and after photograph of my early potatoes and it just exploded i really didn't know i'm not a technical expert when it comes to computers and i didn't really know what was happening and i got in touch with my nephew who's very good stephen and he come back to me a few minutes later and said you've gone viral <laughs> And I said, what's viral? And then he explained to me that, you know, the whole world wants some of your rocket potatoes. Uh, rocket is a variety of potato. And from then it's just exploded. It's just gone on and on and on, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And most of the time, well, virtually all the time, it, people being nice and happy. And it makes me feel good. And so I'll return the favor by being good to, to all you people, young and old. And if it helps people overcome their black days, I don't like using the word depression, because um, we are in a very black place at the moment, the world with COVID-19. And if I can help, I will. And long may it continue. 
Yes, Gerald, we very much appreciate your positivity. Um, definitely have enjoyed looking at your social media and seeing what you have to post. Especially, we love the posts that you posted recently with your sweatshirt that you're wearing right now. Very colorful. Yeah, so I, I, like, I like posting the photographs. And just lately, as I've got braver, I've started to do some small videos. You know? Yes, uh, I so love those as well. They're totally amateur. Elizabeth and myself do them together. You know, sometimes Elizabeth does them. And... And if it's cold or something's not correct for her to go outside because she's got a bad leg, I have to be careful with her. I uh, I put the iPhone on the tripod and sort of do it myself. Oh, that's great. We love that you've been doing videos. It's fun to see um, you explaining things and talking. So and we appreciate that. We hope you continue. Next question. So we looked at a previous interview and you had mentioned you had dyslexia when you were younger. And so you said that you've overcome this challenge and we were just wondering what the best advice you would have for students like us when it comes to challenges in our academics or just life in general. Do you like me to explain how I overcome my dyslexia? Absolutely, yes, well, please. When I was young, I was dyslexic and the world didn't really know what dyslexia was then. You were just thick <laughs> to the masses. And I, through that, I sort of become quite a loner, you know, at school, you know, just doing my own thing. And I was in a playground once. I was 14, 14 plus, and I was in the playground, minding my own business, and on the floor was a paper. Now I picked this paper up because there was a photograph of a fish on it. And I was developing a keen interest in fishing. And there was this beautiful photograph, but everything around it was gobbledygook. I couldn't understand it. And it really got me thinking, I want to know what that big fish is and how that man caught it and et cetera. And within a year, I could buy that paper, which is still being printed today, called the Anglin Times. Uh, from front to back, from back to front, I could read it. And I think it was that paper which was the catalyst for me overcoming my dyslexia. I still have problems at times, you know, uh, I'm inclined to read very fast. And then I have to go back and decipher, you know, to understand that is a, a symptom of dyslexia. But that, in a nutshell, that's how I overcome dyslexia. <laughs> and since Lauren and I are both um, academic resource coordinators in our dorm, we were wondering if you had some advice for students. So to give them academic tips and tricks or just ways to persevere through difficulties? First and foremost, I, I'm just a gardener. And with some of us, we take it another step further and develop a passion for go, growing large veg or giant veg. Some people call it giant, large. I just like the word big. And because I'm a big man, big veg goes with me. And it's just a side issue of me just growing vegetables and fruit. And, and it, it's slightly different. You have to do things different, but it's still first and foremost, just gardening. You know, I, I can explain how I grow a giant carrot. It, would you like me to? Yes. Right. Mine, that would be wonderful. I, I grow a carrot a, a meter or longer. Longer. And I, I use a 200 litre barrel or 40 gallons. 
you know, they're sort of about four feet tall. I have to, I get confused between you being not metric and us being metric. <laughs> but four feet barrel, it holds 200 liters or 40 gallons. You, you, they're fruit, they, they contain fruit or fruit juice. Don't use anything which has got oil or a chemical in it. And you fill it full of builder's sand. And then with a piece of three inch downpipe from a gutter, you bore out a hole in the sand. And when you lift the pipe up, the sand is trapped inside and you shake it out. So you end up with a hole in the sand. And for one barrel, I have six holes. And then you fill it full of compost. Give it a good watering, leave it for a week, and then you plant your seeds. Now the seeds have to be a certain seed. They're not just any carrot seed. You know, and you plant three seeds in each hole. And when they grow to about two inches, with a pair of scissors, you just snip two off to leave one. And then you just look after it. You do this in March, and you just look after them and water them once a week. And by middle of August into September, you will have a giant carrot or a big carrot. And they're also just as tasty as a small carrot. They, they really are. Uh, my popular variety is called sweet candle. And they are the nicest, sweetest carrot you will ever eat. Raw, cooked, Whichever way you want, they are a beautiful carrot. Tender, you know, because there is a fallacy with some people that the big veg become tough and old and not very nice. Not in my garden. That's great. Thank you for sharing. We have definitely seen your big carrots on your Twitter and we, it's very impressive how big they can grow. To be proud yes, of I do. I do parsnips two varieties of <clears throat> carrots, beetroot, I, you can get a long beetroot. I plant 15 varieties of potatoes in buckets and also in my allotment. Uh, are you familiar with the word allotment? Yes, I hadn't heard it prior to your Twitter, but I, I know what it is because you have that shirt that talks about the allotment. Yes, it's something which is very popular in this country. You know, every village, every community has one. And I would recommend to your college to collectively get a piece of land and pull your resources and knowledge and help each other. And I'm convinced you will you know, do well out of it. You know, you could even feed the college. <laughs> Next question. We appreciate that you have the ambition to garden big veg rather than just settling for the smaller vegetables. Uh, we are just wondering if you have like, tips on achieving big goals or what motivated you to, to want to grow big vegetables. First and foremost, I'm 72. Uh, I like to think I'm fit. I've had a few health issues. Five years ago, I had a prostate problem, prostate cancer. And this year, after five years of treatment, the oncologist gave me the all clear. He said, Gerald, go away. We don't want to see you anymore. So, you know, I like to think that gardening paid, played a big part in that you know it it keeps me fit i'm a very physical man i'm always digging and hoeing and raking and 
doing everything. You know, I do use machines, but I don't let machines take over. You know, um, now I'm retired, I've got plenty of time so I can do things manually. But it's also, I think it, it helps me mentally. You know, just being outside, playing with the soil. Uh, this morning, um, I was cr creating my own seed compost uh, for my seed beds, which I'm planting now. And I was digging and sieving, you know, and, you know, it, and when I'm doing that, I haven't got an ounce of stress. No stress. All I'm doing is in my own little world, which I think is good. You know, I really think it's good for a person's well-being. And I'm convinced that you, you boys and girls will find that when you're polling your plot. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's also great knowing that you plan ahead for your garden because of course in life and you know relating it to our academics it's good to be planning ahead uh, so that we can be successful in that regard so and I'm glad to hear that gardening is such a stress relieving process for you that's super exciting and I'm just really grateful that you're here sharing this with us well why not why not why can't you know I help people you know i you know, I'm convinced that we're graduate through COVID-19, it's it will bring people back to normality. You know, keep people active. Keep if you keep this going, your body's going. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Uh, and also the next question. So, of course, as you know, gardening is a slow process that takes patience and strategy. And we were just wondering if you could give us some advice regarding having patience uh, as you're waiting for your vegetables to grow. I'm a big believer in keeping a diary, whether it's on your iPad or on a piece of paper. Elizabeth keeps her diary on her iPad and I keep mine on hard copy. I'm, I'm one for writing everything down every day. And if you keep a diary, it helps stop that frustration of waiting. You know, I plant a row of radishes today. And when you wake up tomorrow, you know, you can just, ah, oh, yeah, I've done that yesterday. I can do this today. And you don't, it's a mind game. You, you keep yourself active, you know, plus it's very good for reference. You know, when you've had a year on your plot and then the following year comes round and you think, oh dear, when did I plant this? Or when did I plant that? If you've got copy you can go back for reference which is that's a natural learning curve isn't it you know we we do that with all subjects and i i really think it helps you get through the frustration it, and it breeds patience and i think if you're optimistic that also breeds patience you know my glass is always half full never half empty yeah I don't do pessimists no you know what a pessimist is I do an optimist with experience <laughs> good that's good <laughs> And if you wouldn't mind um, telling us, I know you probably have many takeaways from your gardening, but if you would just wouldn't mind telling us one of your biggest takeaways that you've had as a gardener of big veg. Um, yes, I, I think, do you mean my biggest vegetable? 
Yeah. Yeah. And if you even want to share what the biggest vegetable was, that would be wonderful as well. Um, I like all big veg. You know, if if I grow, being a, a fisherman, you know, when I go fishing, I want to catch the biggest fish. And my vegetable growing, I still carry that through. So if I'm growing a, a radish, I want to see how big I can get that radish or carrot or parsnip. So, you know, there's, it's just a challenge to see how big I can grow. Um, my, my carrots, I do love. And I've got an ambition to grow a very, very big onion. You know, I would like to grow a, a 10 pound plus onion. You know, I've grown them up to six pounds and, but I really love to grow a, a huge onion. Yeah, I can't even imagine an onion that big. That would be quite the sight to see. Well, definitely stay posted on your Twitter and see how the onion growing is going. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I've been planting since last December in my greenhouse. You know, uh, I've got uh, lots of things growing now. Chilies, uh, bell peppers, uh, onions, leeks. All, you know, this big at the moment, but getting bigger. Yeah. Right, yeah, time and patience and keeping track of them. Before you know it, they'll be big veg, and then you can take a picture with them. <laughs> you know, so not any seed will grow big. So like growing unusual vegetables each year, I'll try and source something slightly different. Last year, I grew some ink, and I see it on YouTube from an American gentleman, uh, a tromboncino. Oh, I've seen pictures of you with the tromboncino before. Those very yeah, large. You know, and it, they, they, they lovely. They're lovely, long shape with a big ball. You can understand they, they're almost like a trombone. <laughs> you know, and... I've got one or two things I'd like to grow this year. I, I can't say too much. I can't tell you all my secrets. Right, of course not. We have to just stay posted on, yeah. on everything going on. Uh, so what would you say motivates you to keep going overall, to keep growing big veg? Onions. I love onions and potatoes. You know, I that motivates me to potatoes and vegetables in general. You know, Liz and myself, we're self-sufficient in vegetables. We hardly ever have to grow, uh, buy veg to eat. You know, if we have surplus, we make pickles, chutneys, jams. Uh, with apples, I make cider which is nice, alcoholic uh, apple juice. <laughs> and- In your cider as well. <laughs> and, and I give family and friends spare. And if we've still got any left over, I donate to a local nursing home. You know, which is, well, it's good, you know. It seems pointless to grow something and then waste it. And, you know, not all my veg are perfect. I'm not like a supermarket where everything is straight. Everything, you know, some of my carrots has five fingers instead of one, but it still tastes delicious. Right. You know, of course, humans aren't perfect either. So your vegetables definitely represent our society and that they're still good, even if they're not perfect. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's a natural thing for people to grow. I think over the years, people have become less inclined to produce their own vegetables. 
and more inclined to spend all their time and money on holidays and supermarkets. And with the lockdowns we've had, I think it shook a lot of people rigid into thinking, let's have a go. And if people like the information and wisdom I've, I've got, I, I will carry on. And I'm sure it's empowering to be able to produce your own things rather than always having to buy them. And um, definitely fulfilling mm -hmm. that you're able to donate items that you've made um, to the local nursing home and to family and friends. So that's very inspirational as well. Thank you. I'm going to have uh, Lauren come over here into my screen and she's she's just going to say uh, a thank you since her microphone was echoing. So she's able to get a few words in here uh, and then we will we'll wrap up our interview. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hi, Gerald. Sorry, we had some technical difficulties, but thank you so much for all your time today and all your That's great insights. Yeah, we just really love your social media account and we can't wait to keep updated on everything that you're growing. And we just really appreciate all your positivity that you're spreading to the world. So thank you again. I hope I'm of, of help to you all. Yeah, I, I I enjoy doing these Zooms. I do. I find a Zoom meeting so much better than just a phone because when you see your face and you see my face, I think you can communicate better. You know, I'm a hands person. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can't sort of <laughs> do things with my hands, you know, I'm lost. Thank thank you all. Agreed. And it's nice to see a smile, oh, too, you. and a laugh. <laughs> I do, apolo I do oh, apologize for my broad Oxfordshire language. Oh, we apologize for our American language as well. So it's OK. This is very cool that you were able to do this with us. Uh, we will be post. We did record this, so we'll be posting a video of this so we can share it. Uh, with our friends and family and if you wanted to share it to your twitter that would be greatly i look, I look well. forward to seeing it thank you yeah. thank, thank you, you. Gerald. yep have Take a wonderful care. day you too thank you <laughs> bye bye, -bye.